And, uh, so I think uh, Michael Shermer, if you're ready. Michael is the founding director and publisher, of, uh, founding editor and publisher of Skeptic Magazine. Uh, uh, he's also a former college professor. He wrote a nice biography of Alfred Russell Wallace. And his latest book is Why Darwin Matters, The Case Against Intelligent Design. Michael Shermer. Thank you, Roger. Good to be here, everybody. If I'm moving a little slow, I threw my back out this week. And just as I was getting better, I brought three cases of Skeptic Magazine to give everybody. And, and that threw it out again this morning. So, But no worries, because you know we study chiropractic, and I've learned how to do it myself. So uh, I'll just show you a little thing here. There we go. Much better. <laughs> You see, there is a God, Michael. <laughs> My headache's gone. <laughs> uh, I was trying to think of a little anecdote that would be appropriate. Huh? Can you do that again? No, no, don't please. I don't want to see um, it. Hang on. Let me see if they have any, <laughs> they have any uh, cups here. Uh, you're not supposed to show the reveal, but a little plastic cup goes a long ways for doing some simple magic tricks. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, don't tell Randy I did that, because uh, I'm only an amateur. <laughs> I really did throw my back out, though, so that's not, that's not funny. Uh, well, I was trying to think of an anecdote uh, appropriate for today, and I was on a book tour for my new book, Why Darwin Matters, on the East Coast last week, and a funny thing happened to me. I was, um, uh, I was uh, I had a couple hours before my evening talk, and I went for a, a little walkabout. This was in Philadelphia. I thought I'd go to see that Muter Museum that has all the the old uh, weird medical oddities from the 19th century. And, uh, and uh, so I, 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 I exited the hotel, one of these multi-story hotels, and I started down the sidewalk, and I was wearing this suit. And uh, it turns out uh, back in January, we were in Las Vegas for the big Randy conference, the, the amazing meeting. And, and uh, one night, we went to see the Penn and Teller show, the magician's Penn and Teller, and they end the show with this terrific a double bullet catch where pens on one side, tellers on the other side, they each shoot these 357 magnums, uh, which the bullets go through plate glass, uh, to pieces of, of glass there. The bullets themselves have been signed by two volunteers, the casing and the bullet, and then you can see when the volunteers look at the, the two bullets that have crossed the stage, the one bullet is now in his mouth, the other bullet's in his mouth. And uh, I got to be one of the volunteers for this. and. Uh, it was pretty cool. My bullet that I put little MS on there uh, it actually ended up on the other side of the stage. I don't know how they did it. Uh, all I know is that they didn't actually shoot it and catch it. Uh, we know that much, but it's a good trick. Anyway, I got to keep the bullet, and I had put the bullet in this pocket. So, uh, so now months later, I, I exit the, the, the room, and, and I'm walking out of the hotel, and I hear this noise, and I look up, and there's a crazed evangelist who has heaved a Gideon's Bible out of the room and it's hurling toward me, and I duck, and the Bible struck me right in the chest. And that Bible would have gone right through my heart if it weren't for that bullet. So, I'm not sure of the relevance of that. I like it, though. That's good. Mostly made up story. <laughs> Miracles do, do occur. Well, um, uh, I, I've written many times about this kind of. Um, uh, three-tiered model that I put together when I originally wrote uh, Why People Believe Weird Things, and I've just sort of applied it in, in various uh, books. That is, uh, what is the relationship of science and religion? I, just roughly speaking, there's the sort of conflicting worlds model, um, same worlds, so, so they're in conflict, same worlds model, and then the separate worlds model. So largely what we've heard so far and will hear will fall into one of these three categories. Uh, obviously, there you know there's subtle differences, but just as a working model, it helps us to to get our minds around this. So, in the same world's model, it's the idea is that science and religion are just two different ways of looking at the same reality, and therefore we should have sort of mutual respect for them. Somebody uh, like uh, contemporary times here, Owen Gindrich's book, um, God's Universe, and perhaps um, um, uh, Francis Collins' book. Would be, would be in this category. They're completely friendly to science. They accept all the findings of science, and, uh, and they feel that the science just uh, illuminates what they already believe. In, in my opinion, in, in virtually every case, um, these are instances of people that already believe for other reasons, and then they use the findings of science to uh, support what they already believe. Uh, and that's almost always the case, uh, because 
the reason people believe anything usually has to do more with psychology and sociology and how you were raised and, and the emotional impact and importance of the belief, and then you back into it with rational arguments after the fact. That's, that's what most of us do most of the time, politically, economically, ideologically, in, in every which way, including religion. So that's the same world's model. The conflicting world's model, which is held by virtually all of my atheist friends and fundamentalist Christian friends, is that one of them is right and the other one's wrong, depending on the particular thing you're talking about, and therefore you, you really need to pick one. One of them's right and the other one's wrong. And then finally, the third separate world's model, this would be best uh, supported, I suppose, by, by Steve Gould's uh, Noma idea, non-overlapping magisteria, that they're, they're really two different things, like pl plumbing and baseball or something. They just have nothing to do with one another. And so, therefore, they can't be in conflict. Um, so um, I guess, you know, we can just sort of think about that heuristic as we hear different uh, uh, views. I think the answer, it depends in large part on, on what your goal is. Um, I've been thinking about this a lot uh, lately because uh, since I'm in the business and I read all these books, I find myself in agreement with almost everybody. And how can that be? You have to be one of these tiers, don't you? And, and I think it depends on what your, your goal or purpose is. Um, if you feel like, say, Sam does, that religion is really a dangerous uh, social force that could bring down the demise of Western civilization, something like that, um, then the idea that, well, we should make nice uh, because we want to teach uh, good science and we want everybody to embrace science and so we should be polite to religious people, um, well, that's sort of irrelevant. If you think your larger goal here is I'm going to save Western civilization because look what the, the people that, like terrorists can do to us. So you would then pick which of these categories or which attitude you want to take toward religion depending on what your purpose is, what, what's your goal, what, what, what are you trying to accomplish. Um, so when I read uh, like Dawkins' book, I, I can't find much that I disagree with it at all, and yet I would never take that approach. And, 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 and why is that? And um, Because I, have, I think I have a different goal. It depends on what your goal is. If your goal is to talk religious people out of their beliefs, that would be one form of strategy. You would take a certain strategy to do that. The, uh, if your goal is something else, then maybe that wouldn't work. Um, I'm not saying this very well, but so let me back into it in a, in a slightly different way. Um, uh, if your goal is to lead a rational, logical life, that is, you want to use science and reason and rationality and, and logic and so on to derive your ideas, to try to understand how the world works, and you want to apply this across the board to everything you do, uh, including the derivation of your ideas, but, but more than that, how you act in the world. Um, if you have derived certain ideas based on science and reason, and, and then you apply behavioral methods that do just the opposite of what your goals are, which I, I contend most contentious attitudes toward religion will do just the opposite of what most people claim they want to do. That it's not just that, well, you're not making nice, or you know, you should really sacrifice your principles in, in, in this particular instance because we have some other goal. That, that isn't the reason. 